Oh boy, how many of you that do hammer curls about your second or third set in, you really start to feel pain right here in this part of your forearm. Do you see that baby, how pumped it is? Yeah, that's the brachioradialis. Oh man, try holding it at this uh, angle, this dumbbell at this angle after a workout for any length of time and you'll feel the lactic acid building up right in here to the point where it's almost impossible to continue to hold the bell and pretty soon further and further and further and further for until eventually it just collapses, right? <laughs> hey, I'm Doug Holland LMT and I have another massage tip for massage professionals and today we're going to be talking about forearm pain from hammer curls or lat pull downs that eventually get you right here. All right, let's talk about it. So one of my patients asked me, Doug, how come when I go to the gym and I keep doing hammer curls or I do lat pull downs, I can only get through a few sets without this muscle right here hurting me? And you know, I'm almost 52 years old. You can kind of see a little bit. When I was younger, you could see it better, but you can see where that muscle pops there. Now, what is the brachioradialis? The brachioradialis is primarily a flexor of the forearm. Okay, so it breaks here at the forearm. Brachii break, right? Now, its origin is on the supracondylar ridge of the humerus. And the way I find that is, whenever I'm working on athletes that have this problem, is we know we have a multipennate muscle, the deltoid, right? It's multi-pennate, and then its tendon comes down, and it attaches to the uh, deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. So it comes down, and the way I find that is, is I look about halfway up the arm. So if you kind of break the difference between the shoulder, the head of the humerus, and the uh, condyles down here, just kind of break it in half. My shirt almost breaks it in half. All right, that's where the deltoid tuberosity is. And if you just kind of move a little bit medial to that, still on the lateral surface, then you start almost touching the origin of the brachioradialis, which is the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus itself. So that's kind of an easy way I find it. Just split the difference, kind of touch where you know where the deltoid tuberosity is, kind of work your way just a little bit medial, still on the lateral surface, you know that's the origin. From there, it goes all the way down the forearm, and I'm kind of looking at the camera myself, to the styloid process of the radius. Now that's important because that's a pretty long muscle right there. It, it can flex that forearm, but it also supinates. It also supinates and pronates the uh, wrist. So you can see that right there as it's doing it. So when we do a regular curl, we're using our biceps brachii. We all know that. Everybody knows the biceps brachii. You got two, two heads and they're working hard. But the second I immediately rotate uh, the, the dumbbell, I'm taking out that, the, the medial head. I'm barely using the lateral head and now I'm relying more on the brachioradialis and the brachialis underneath. That's pretty much what I'm relying on. I'm taking out that, uh, the, the strongest muscle of, of the arm, which is the biceps brachii. So a person does lots of reps, tons and tons and tons of reps, and lactic acid builds in here. Well, there's really no other muscles that are going to come to its aid. It's just going to fail unless we supinate uh, the, uh, the exercise. We open the soup. Now we can bring the anterior deltoid into it. We can bring the coracobrachialis into it. There's all kinds of other muscles that will aid in stabilization. They're, they're fixators. They fixate the shoulder. And that way we can use the bigger muscles, the biceps brachii, and of course the brachialis uh, that just, you know, breaks at the elbow here. So what do you do? This is constantly a problem for a lot of the, the athletes or those of you that like to go to the gym all the time and you like to lift weights. It's a constant problem. Well, the muscle has to be stretched and it has to be stretched very, very well. So with your patients, 
I'm going to show you my trick on how I stretch this muscle. There's a certain technique that I like to use. Look, I'm still sweating from the workout. Um, there's a certain technique that I like to use, and it involves thumb pressure, acupressure, and then, of course, deep superficial strokes of the arm. So let's get down to the table, and I'll demonstrate. Okay, so like I mentioned, we have the deltoid tuberosity is right about here. And then what we do is we go up about an inch or so, still on the lateral surface, and that's going to be the beginning of the brachioradialis. And it's going to run all the way down to the styloid process here. So we should be able to see that line pretty good. So what I like to do first, I'm gonna, let me get my uh, lotion. I'll be right back. All right, so what I like to do is put just a little bit of lotion on and to warm up the, the uh, muscles superficially. And more importantly, that, that the brachioradialis itself. Now, th this was as important as you don't want a ton of lotion. You want enough that you can perform some drag. Oil, I wouldn't even recommend oil. I'd want to have lotion uh, to do this. So as we can see, the arm is linear to the body. And what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to focus down here with acupressure right at the styloid process. I'm going to start with thumb walking right on the muscle. So I'm going to thumb walk directly on the muscle itself. I mean, you are hitting the tendon, obviously. There's part of the tendon, so it's not all muscle. You are getting the tendon. And I'm going to thumb walk all the way up. And now we're going to start hitting the, the center belly of the muscle. And I'm going to go all the way to the mid part of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. So like guitar strings going all the way down, I'm going to do this walk about a half inch, maybe even a quarter inch either lateral medial of this line that I just drew. Okay, so if I have too much lotion, I'm not going to get the drag that I'm looking for. Now what's thumb walking do? It brings acupressure, deep compression, along with stretching the entire length of the muscle itself. Now after I do that, I'm going to do what I call a radius rolling. And I get a good hold of the wrist itself. And I take this hand, the other hand, I place it right over the top of the radius. And then I internally and externally rotate and I take my thumb and this and this little area in here and I'm dragging it over the surface of the brachioradialis. And I'm just moving up about a half inch at a time. I always work inferior to superior. And you can switch hands and do it. If one, one side fatigues, you can do it either way. But what this is, is this is a nice way of doing cross fiber friction on that particular muscle. Instead of going this way with the, you know, maybe the, the hand, you can use the twisting motion of the opposite hand to really dig in there. You get above the elbow. Now if the client has huge arms, it might be a little tougher on your thumb, so you might want to use acupressure across that muscle itself with thumb driving. You might want to do that. But at least down here, most people, you should be able to reach around and work. So inferior to superior, we want to work with the venous flow of blood. Now, the last thing I like to do to really stretch 
is I make sure their elbow is secure on the table. I bring the hand in extension. So that means I'm pulling on the arm right at the wrist. And then I take the palm of this hand and I drag right on that muscle. Now you got to be careful because this can really hurt and go all the way up to its origin. So it's insertion is that the styloid process, start the styloid process of the radius, work all the way up and I'm right on that muscle. This stretch right here will drive out the lactic acid, it'll bring in fresh uh, cellular um, respiration, it'll open things up and they, they tell you if, if you have a patient that has a lot of problems because of hammer curls or lat pull downs that affect this right when you get to this area here they're going to want to come off the table because it's going to be so so painful because it it's all the fibers are tight the nerves are hypersensitive so you just got to keep dragging and increasing in it in, in pressure and the more you do it after about five minutes it should start to feel really good but without that stretch that final stretch the cross fiber friction and the thumb pressure all the way through by a massage therapist they generally just keep repeating the same problem there's some self-help stuff that they can do at home but this is what really works that radius rolling is the ticket to help that brachial radialis feel so much better hope you enjoyed this tip i'm doug holland you can see me at hollandreflexology.com with lots of articles that i have there pictures and of course links to a lot of videos that I've done over the last 12-15 years. Just remember this, if there's no discomfort on the table, we know that it's nothing more than a foo-foo massage.